Thank you and welcome uh, and thank you for um, tuning in to the um, our uh, me select board's meeting of uh, August 28, 2023. I'd like to begin this meeting with the approval of uh, the signing of the warrant and reviewing of the minutes from our last session of August uh, 14, 2023. Do we have a motion to sign the warrant? It would be up page. I was absent. So. Okay, Michael. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the signing of the warrant from the meeting of August 14. Very good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is we have uh, no public hearing, but we do have a scheduled appointment. Can we do the minutes? Here we do the minutes too. Put them both together. Michael put both. Right. Separate motion. Okay. Okay. Um, I make a motion to approve the minutes for August 14, 2023. Uh, and I second that uh, to approve the minutes of uh, regular scheduled meeting, I August 14, 2023, and uh, uh, Selectman O'Loughlin will be abstained. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, again, we have uh, next on the agenda is public hearings. We do not have any, uh, but we uh, next uh, uh, on the agenda is scheduled appointments. We do have a, an appointment uh, with Attorney uh, Gerald Moody, who will uh, uh, present the amendment to extend the original agreement dated July 31st, 1991, between the Town of Milford and Milford Power Limited Partnership, which provides uh, that uh, Milford Power will purchase effluent uh, produced by the Milford uh, Wastewater Treatment Plant for use and cooling in the uh, power plant. Uh, I remember this was going on since 1991 with uh, Attorney yeah, Moody. And, I, and like I said, it's uh, a staggering volumes of water I used when it comes to cooling the uh, turbines in that, in that plant. And by uh, uh, having this type of a program, we're actually using treated affluent to help cool these towers, again, which not only helps us preserve our resources, but also helps the uh, power plant uh, save ec economically as well, but also too uh, preserves our resources as well. We were also getting income from it as well. So I appreciate that, Jerry, and thank you for your work on this for the past what 34 years. Well, I, I negotiated it 30 years ago, so I figured okay. I'd do it now. This is yeah. a 15-year extension, so I'll come okay. back in 15 years. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> God willing. <laughs> so yeah, and then you just said this is a, an extension of the existing agreement. Fire, which is 30 years approved uh, by the selectmen and the sewer commissioners and town meeting. Uh, this one will have to go to town meeting before you make it for a total of five years. So there'll be an article of the warrant. Okay. It, and it really, it's a simple extension, uh, changing as little as possible of the, the, the content, uh, in significantly increasing the amount of stage in the effluent. That mm -hmm. has increased in many years, so basically a 50% increase to start mm -hmm. uh, in what stage of the effluent, which is only one part of the importance of the agreement. The other two parts maybe more important, and first of all, a guarantee of a million dollars per year in taxes. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this is the way that we can contract for that. Uh, in addition, in fact, part of that, it's also, it enforces their promise, now part of the contract, not to apply for an exemption from taxes because as a manufacturing corporation, which they are, they could exempt their personal property, which would be significant. So not only are they guaranteeing the million, which mm -hmm. is important because sometimes the bill comes in under a million, they're promising not to knock the taxes down by, I don't know, pick a number, two, three hundred thousand dollars. Sure. So that's been the part of it since the beginning. It's still part of it. There was no resistance on their part. Uh, they worked very well together. So, again, 15 years with increases in the, the second five and in the third five in terms of the effluent and locking down those other two provisions for all time. It's an article in the warrant for town meeting. So, I've got the three original. You know, your board, this is what your board authorized at the last meeting in the second session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have, you know, if you approve it tonight, which I would hope you would, sure. I've got three originals to sign, then i got to get the sewer commissioners on it, too. Sure. A any board members have any questions or concerns for Moody? No? no? I no. Just like I said, it's a great job. Thank you for that. And thank great you for the Milford Power for, for, for their... Uh, thank you, Jeremy. But I'm going to have you sign just to keep this moving, because sure. then i got to get the sewer commissioners. So there's three, so... Sign off three. Okay. Two, so we have a motion to approve this. Motion. So moved. So moved, Michael. For a second. And I'll, I make that uh, unanimous. One. Oh, the other thing, Jerry, too, I was going to mention, too, when I was looking at the, uh, it says Milford Water Commission. So would that be Milford Wastewater Plant? On this here? Yes, it should be. I, I'll, okay. I'll change. I can change that. Yep. Easy enough. You're right. That should be sort. I guess I've done too much work for the water commission recently. Okay. Yeah, I need a real pen. Yeah. I'll get you one right 
Yeah, after I get yeah. the store commission. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Brad. Pick up Paul. I didn't see that. Be a third one. Yeah, uh, there, yeah, Michael got it. Yeah. All right. I already gave it to you. Oh, we yeah. assigned three. Oh, you just we assigned three. Well, something happened here. I got two. Okay. It's got to be three. But yeah, I saw it. I saw it bang my head. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Too much paper floating around there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you as always. Thank you again. I'll be back someday. Yes. 15, Jerry. Next, we'll, we'll be here. Next, next scheduled appointment is an appointment with uh, representatives from Good Energy, which is our consultant firm, um, which is preparing the town's municipal aggregation plan. Uh, uh, they'll be present uh, to open the process to request approval of the plan from DPU uh, um, and schedule a hearing for additional public comment on the plan. Um, like I said, at the last annual town meeting, sir, you're going to represent? No, no, no. no, no. Oh. On Zoom. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, what I was going to mention, too, is that at our last annual town meeting, the uh, town meeting did approve us to enter into uh, a, a municipal aggregation, which is a uh, program where we can bulk purchase electricity uh, by not only as, as a community, but if we can join with other communities. And when you purchase in bulk, you can get probably a better deal than you could if you were just purchase uh, on an individual basis. The other... Um, um, purposes of this is also to, uh, it, it, it ha extends a longer period instead of the six months that's guaranteed by the individual companies. Uh, it, it's, it goes a little further than that. And it also offers a green electricity option. Now there's certain steps you have to take. It just wasn't being passed at town meeting, you know, that we had it approved and it was going to get in, kick into play right away. Uh, we did, the first part was the vote at, at the town meeting, which was uh, passed overwhelmingly. The, the second part is what we're doing right Right now is to prepare a municipal aggregation plan in, cons in, in consultation with uh, Green Energy. Uh, and they, what they will do is present it to us, and then after that, they'll have a public hearing on it as well. So uh, we're all set. If for any representative from Green Energy to take the stage, you're all set. Uh, you're on. Hello, everyone. Hi. Can you all hear from me? Yes, we yes. can. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you, all. Uh, thank you all for inviting us to today's select board meeting. Uh, my name is Rafida Rahman, and I have uh, recently joined Good Energy as their sustainability and engagement strategist. And uh, I would also like to introduce my colleague, Mr. Patrick Roche, who is the director of innovation of the Good Energy New England team. And we both have been working together um, in these aggregation plans and tonight we're here to provide a brief overview of the draft plan of the Milford Community Electricity Aggregation Program and discuss the next steps. So Patrick if you could um, share the slides that would be great. Yeah I like to just say host as disabled uh, participant screen sharing. Is it possible for me to, to share my screen? I just gave permission. Yeah, yes it is. It, it's fine. Thank you. He indicates that he gave you permission to do yes. so, sir. Oh, great. Let me try it now. Ah, there it is. Perfect. All right. Okay. If you could go to the next slide. Thank you. So this slide basically shows how how it's all done. So Milford Community Electricity does not replace National Grid as your electric utility. The utility continues to deliver electricity, repair outages, and manage all billing. 
The program offers new alternatives for the supply portion of your bill. So Good Energy as a town's consultant will help the town with all the tasks that are needed to secure this new electricity supply. Next slide, please. As you can see, uh, we're already covering 52 active programs in Massachusetts, and Milford is one of the seven programs that started development in summer 2023, managed by Good Energy. And you can see all the other six other communities in the map on the right-hand side. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide basically kind of shows the Milford plan development process. So the first process start, kick-started in May 2023, where the town meeting authorized development of an aggregation plan. And again, in May 2023, during that process, Good Energy was selected as a consultant to work with the town of Milford. And then in summer 2023, um, we developed a draft plan with the Milford staff. And finally, in August 2023, we are presenting this draft plan. And to talk about the plan details, um, I would like to uh, shift it over to my colleague, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Sophia. So we'll give a, yeah, a short overview of what's in the plan, and then we'll talk about next steps as well. Um, so. Uh, the goals that sort of shape this plan um, are both economic, trying to use that bulk purchasing power to get more competitive prices and the best terms and conditions for Milford electricity consumers. Um, we also want to expand access to clean energy and um, to just add more choices for consumers out there. So importantly, this program doesn't take away any options. It adds new options to the mix that's available for Milford um, North electricity users. And you'll see down there on the bottom, there is a savings disclaimer. Um, we as Good Energy have a great track record of helping our communities save money with these programs compared to the utility prices. But we just have to say we can never guarantee that because we don't know the utility prices uh, in the future. We only know them six months out at a time. So we just, uh, that's our goal is to help, help uh, folks save money, but we just can't guarantee that. So the way the program is structured is it is ultimately the select board's program. You oversee the program. We, as your consultant, really manage all of the day-to-day -day operations on behalf of the town, and you know, particularly we'll be working with the town administrator um, uh, on a lot of those sort of day-to-day -day decisions. But ultimately, the select board will be making the big decisions about when to go out the bid and, and when to contract, <clears throat> uh, all guided by the bid energy's consultation and our, our recommendations. Um, and in terms of what this program sort of looks like on the ground once it's rolled out, um, it effectively replaces National Grid as the default electricity supply in town. So as Rafita said, the National Grid still handles all the delivery portion of the bill, so they still deliver the power. If, if, the, if there's a storm, there's an outage, they're still going to repair the, the wires. Um, they still handle the bill, so everyone still gets one bill. But the supply portion, effectively, the electricity that they're delivering is what's going to be chosen by the town of Milford that we, we help you secure. And as a new default for the town, the way it works when we, when we launch is we send a letter to everyone who's currently using National Grid as their default. Uh, before, we, before we start, and it, that letter has the prices, it has um, the term length, how long the rate's good for, how much renewable energy is in there. And uh, people have about 30 days to decide whether they want to be in or out before the program starts. And um, then uh, the nice thing about this program is if you're in, you can always leave at any time if you want. So uh, even if you don't you decide, you know, you don't decide to we call it opting out when you get enrolled in the program and a few months later, uh, even a month later, you decide, oh, I'd rather stick with National Grid or maybe go to some other third-party electricity supplier. You can always opt out. There's no penalty. Um, you can leave the program. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's basically it's a new default electricity supply kind of guided by, by your goals and using your bulk purchasing power. The plan that um, we can put together has three different products or us electricity supply options. And one is the standard. That's the one that when we roll out the program, that is the new default supply for the 
that would be called milk stick standard. And that, that's on the far left here. The goal with this is that we make it a little bit greener and cleaner, but also hopefully have some savings compared to each other. So the idea is it's trying to be sort of a win-win environmentally and economically for us. Uh, and this has really become a, a very common uh, offering amongst many communities in the state now. Um, and what we help you do is pick the amount of renewable energy so that you're hopefully very likely to, uh, to have savings. Um, and again, you'll see that disclaimer there that we can't guarantee it, but we do have a great track record there. Um, so that would be the standard, the, the new default, really. And then there are two other options. So you could choose the basic, which would be the lowest cost option in the program. It would just meet the state minimum renewable energy standard. And that, that would be for someone who wants the absolute lowest cost in the program. And then there would also be uh, a 100% product for someone who wants to go up to 100% renewables. And uh, that would you know, obviously cost a little, a little bit more. So um, now, yeah, that's kind of the, the product mix. Again, we've seen this be really um, very popular amongst many communities who have been active for a number of years. And what they often do is start with their standard product with just a little bit of extra renewable energy. And as the program gains steam and gains trust in the community and you build on that track record, they may decide to increase that amount of renewable energy over time. And um, so the plan does have a lot more detail in it, but that's really the, the high level. Uh, and in terms of what comes next, we uh, you know, have this brief presentation about the draft plan. What is required if we want to move to the next step is to open up a 30-day public review period uh, where we would post the plan online. <clears throat> we would also have a, a hard copy at, at town hall and folks could review it, could comment on it, ask questions. And we would also have the, the board would schedule a public hearing. Usually it's at the, um, the, the, the select board meeting, you know, at the end of that 30-day period. And um, effectively then what would happen is we would, you know, present to you all the comments, just, you know, evaluate if any changes need to be made to the plan. And, and then the, the board would vote to approve the plan. And um, when we have that approval from the board, uh, we, there's also a, a short consultation process with the Department of Energy Resources. There's a, a meeting we would do with town staff and the Department of Energy Resources. But when we have both that consultation and the board's approval, we then submit that to the, to the Department of Public Utilities, the state agency that, that reviews all of these plans. And ultimately, we need their approval before we get to launch. Um, and we can talk about that timeline if you'd like. But once we have their approval, then we as uh, can help you go look out in the market to see when is a good time to go to bid and uh, procure an electricity supply contract. And the nice thing with this way the plan is written, uh, and you're, the town is never under any obligation to select an electricity supply contract and actually launch the program. Um, you can always you can always kind of pull the plug on this thing at any time. But if you do get a good proposal uh, that will let you launch the program, then we then help you with all of the public education and outreach that's needed to, to do that, that public notification, and then to, of course, manage the supplier in that contract. Um, so, yeah, so we're definitely at the very, very beginning. And what we'd be looking to do is to see if the board would be um, open to opening that public review period. We would um, put up a a, a, a website, you know, links to the town, and have that plan publicly available online, and we also can get it over to the town hall. Um, so I think that's um, most of what we wanted to, to talk about. Um, and the only other thing I would just put is the plan, uh, you know, the price that you that we ultimately would procure for all these products. Um, it, it's basically just the cost of the electricity. Um, some towns do add uh, another small fee in that can be used to fund things like a like directly developing renewable energy. Um, however, I would say a lot of towns start, they don't put that in their plan to start, uh, and that's not in your plan to start right now, as it's kind of like a another level of complexity, um, and you, know, you could potentially add that back in later. 
but we do want to you know, want, want to uh, want you to know about that. So, yeah, with that, I'll um, I'll pause there, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them uh, either the plan or or the process. And I, I just, I, I can't hear anything, so I just wanted to make sure <laughs> there's any audio coming through. Um, what's his kid's name? I just want to make sure we can hear the couple of things. No, I can hear you, but I don't, I can't hear anything else. I don't believe anyone has questions. So. No, the, the only question I that I, I have we're we're here in um, the end of August. Um, is it is it a possibility that we'd have this online by the next the upcoming heating season? I know we have a 30-day public review, and in, in, in the well, you know you're talking maybe October, uh, all of September with the 30-day review, and October with the select board public hearing, and then proposals of a um, a plan that we would see that would fit our Milford, that we would also be hopefully be guided by green energy on selecting this plan. Um, what, just by past experience, what do you feel would be the start date for the residents to um, you know, get, get this program uh, in, into, uh, into play for them to participate in? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I would say, unfortunately, Massachusetts regulatory system is really uh, super slow for this, and um, we, we do have communities that have been waiting, you know, well over a year to start it. Um, what I would say, though, is we are seeing some very encouraging signs from the new administration. They came in, uh, inherited you know, a, a DPU that had a huge backlog of aggregation <laughs> plans that would take one, even, even sometimes more than two years uh, to get approved, which is just outrageous. And they've recently uh, opened up a proceeding to try to get that down to be a 120 to 180 day process. Um, we need to see how that, that plays out, but what we are seeing, I think, is the administration's committed to uh, having some good timetables. So there's never been a deadline or a timetable for DPU to review this. So I think the, the short answer is this heating season would not, this winter, this upcoming winter, would, I, I, would, uh, I don't think that's going to be a possibility. I think, uh, you know, we could be optimistic and look for maybe next summer. But I think most realistically, we're probably talking about having a program in place for the heating season, season going into next winter. Um, of course, we're going to work you know, to try to help you move as fast as possible. But given the DPU delays, what we've seen, that's probably what we're thinking. And um, I, I think we would say that, the, yeah, that is unfortunately where we're at. But where a lot of communities go to with this is they say, let's get the process moving. Let's get in the queue with DPU. And the sooner we get in that queue, the, the sooner we can come out of it. Right. And, and what would be the cause of the de delays from uh, uh, D DPU? Uh, you know, is it because the, they have questions with the program that's designed or because they're backlogged or what? Yeah, it, it's a little hard to say. It's mostly, uh, we think, backlog that the, the DPU oversees, uh, you know, everything, all the utilities. They also oversee, you know, the MBTA, um, Uber and Lyft. They have a huge requirement of things to do and the statute that governs municipal aggregation these programs doesn't give the DPU oversight but it doesn't put any timeline on them and so i think what has most often happened is this falls to the bottom of their priority pile they often and they always do ask some questions but the questions don't seem to be really the mm -hmm. the cause of such delay um and we always what we've done with this plan too is we've tried to build it to the absolute latest standards that BPU has, has issued in all of their other rulings and dockets. So, um, that, yeah, that, that we, we, would, we, would, we were trying to put forth a plan that is as compliant, uh, you know, complies with everything that they Right, to, 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 to keep the questions down. So, I think 
from what I could gather from my uh, research when we were doing this at town meeting uh, last May, um, there was a book close to about like 175, 177 municipalities that are participating in the program. Would, would they, would all of them have gone through these, this many, this, this long of a time to get the program going or is it just because it's the sign of the times? Yeah, it's, um, you're, you're right about the numbers uh, and especially what we've seen is that over time, the length of time it takes to approve a plan has gone up. Okay. Um, so back when some of our first communities were applying in 2016, it was taking you know three or four months. Um, and you know we have communities who applied at the end of 2021 who are still waiting. Um, so it's been a little, definitely a bit of a head scratcher and an unfortunate thing, especially since so many communities have kind of proven that it's possible and and you know there's good track record. So. Um, yeah, we were glad to see the administration trying to do something on, on the speed of this. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions or concerns? This? No, I don't. The only question, I, Patrick, the only question I have is what you're looking from us this evening is approval to open up the public review and the public hearing? Exactly, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you would like to do next. That's your next schedule move correct yeah and that has to be done through the board right yes the board would have to you say make a motion to open it we'll then schedule the public oh, hearing yeah but do, do, yeah they, they, they'll just be open for 30 days has to be open for 30 days be it online or pick up a copy at the town hall we're going to meet uh, myself right. and those uh, good energy representatives with chris george so that we can make sure the website is set up properly sure. We'll get the hard copies. Sure, then we should and make we'll that. We'll pick the appropriate select board date the, uh, for the meeting, for the hearing. Public review. Patrick, to the communities that you have now, what are you seeing for the average rates? Yeah, so I would say rates have been really, and we've got about 50, as we said, we've got a 52 communities that are active and have, have rates. Rates were really stable for a number of years, but as many of you may know, uh, with during during COVID and then with the Russian invasion, uh, energy markets went wild. You might have seen that for your own municipal accounts, um, and we you know we've just come off some of the highest ever you know electricity prices, particularly in the winter. So um, I would say what used to be really really common was you know rates in the ten cent range. Um, and, you know, more recently for communities that contracted in the last year or so, that was definitely moving much higher given where the, the global energy markets were. But um, so that, that moved, you know, more towards like the 15 cent range. Um, but we'll see, you know, when you guys come out and meet you and are ready to, to secure, uh, well, I think some of this, we'll see where some of this recent volatility has settled. And, um, uh, you know, the good thing is even those communities who, who were contracting at 14 or 15 cents, they're still seeing, you know, significant savings compared to the, the utility rate, which is sort of our benchmark. So, um, yeah, I would say, that, yeah, the, the landscape has been shifting a bit, but uh, we are still, still being able to provide that economic value. Thank you. Anybody else? No. I entertain a motion to open up a, a public 30-day uh, public review. I make a motion that we authorize the opening of a 30-day public review and schedule a public hearing, and that we uh, delegate that to the town administrator right. and his staff. Michael? I would second that, Mr. Chairman. And I make that unanimous. All in favor? Aye. 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 Patrick, all set. Great. We really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you Patrick. Much, we'll be in touch. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next on the schedule appointments is um, we have our town engineer, Elizabeth Mineni, and Highway Severe. Scott Christofoli will be, uh, they'll be here to talk about, update us on the stormwater management plan. 
which is a very important plan. I believe it was, what, two, 2003 when this came into being? Yeah. Around there. And again, as everybody knows, that stormwater uh, creates, uh, you know, when it runs through various uh, avenues and whatnot, it picks up a lot of pollutants that ends up in our in our, uh, water in our water system. So like I said, it's something that we're trying to do. We also did something with the um, water gardens in Town Park, which was a nice move too. Anyways, uh, Scott, you're on, thank you. Yeah, so a lot has changed since 2003, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we were plugging away for you and I uh, thank you for the opportunity for us to do this presentation. With thank you. Um, this affects a lot of residents, all of residents in town eventually is going to affect them. Um, we kind of want to give you this presentation so you can see what the future of stormwater compliance is and uh, <clears throat> see what we're heading towards money-wise and, and what we do now. Um, so, Natalie is here from Environmental Partners Group. She's going to do the presentation for us. She's our consultant that works on our storm. Good, thank you. Great. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, again, my name is Natalie Palmersheim. Mm -hmm. I am a senior scientist and project manager with Environmental Partners, um, an environmental consulting company that assists municipalities, you know, with water, wastewater, stormwater, and a number of other things. I have been working with the town through highway and engineering, you know for a number of years now, you know, mm -hmm. keeping the town up with compliance with the MS4 program. Um, so again, we just wanted to meet with you today, kind of give you an update on the MS4 program in whole, where Milford is and standing with the compliance, and then, you know, what we foresee in the next 5, 15, 20 years of the new permit program and what's coming. Great. So again, a uh, quick overview, we'll just go through the regulatory background, what is the MS4, what MS4 in Milford looks like, especially um, focusing on the Charles River watershed and their extra uh, compliance requirements there. We'll take a look at existing costs of what the stormwater program um, runs for the town uh, currently, and then some predicted costs for compliance and what's coming in the next, um, like I said, five, 10, 15 years. And then, you know, we really want to hone in that right now, you know, it's between engineering and high and the highway department, but you know, we would like to see a stormwater management position be added to the town staff, um, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. And then, you know, how can we fund this program? What we do currently, or what the town is doing currently, and has done since 2003, and then just kind of looking at examples of stormwater utilities or funding mechanisms that are in the area and in Massachusetts, and maybe how would that work here if we get to that point. And then we'll close the question and answer, but at any point you have a, a comment or want to chime in, just let us know. The first right. So as you know, um, the MS4 program really started back in the 70s with the Clean Water Act. Um, that came into play, really focused on wastewater treatment and the cleanup of those facilities and their discharges. That made some good strides, and in the 80s, they came out with some amendments that kind of changed the focus or added the focus to stormwater and construction. That made additional strides, and they were like, okay, let's keep this going. So the first phase two of the MS4 program came out in 2003. So since 2003, Milford, has been um, you know, a designate, designated municipality that discharges their stormwater to the waters of the U.S. Um, you, you know, discharges shall not cause or contribute to any impairments of those surface water, water bodies. And um, also, you know, the 2016 permit came out technically in 2018. So the end of fiscal 23, which just closed, was year five of the permit. And so EPA is kind of um, letting us know that there is going to be a new version of the permit coming that, again, will probably have additional requirements and things that will be enhanced in that version. They say it's going to come in the fall. We'll see um, when it gets here, but we're already kind of anticipating that there will be additional changes and requirements in that new version. So since the permit was in place, it's always focused on these six minimum control measures. And we're not going to get into all of the details. I just wanted to kind of refresh your memory. Um, you know, these six minimum control measures, or MCMs, really focus to reduce the pollution to the maximum extent practicable. Um, and you know, the overall, there are over 100 requirements in the permit. Again, we're not going to go into all of it. But the town is responsible for hitting different benchmarks with each of these pieces. So there's a public education and outreach, you know, social media, your town website, involvement and participation opportunities 
the illicit discharge detection and elimination or IDD program is pretty intensive. You know, map, sample, and inspect all of your stormwater infrastructure. Mm. Again, construction site stormwater runoff, that's more for um, when there's active construction sites, looking at erosion control, getting out there, inspecting, making sure you don't have um, runoff off of those active construction sites. And then post-construction stormwater management, that's more for once the site is developed or redeveloped, there's a stormwater BMP that needs to be maintained. And lastly, the good housekeeping and pollution prevention, that's all of the day-to-day -day and highway. Catch basin cleaning, street sweeping, um, you know, the operation and maintenance of, of miles and miles of stormwater uh, infrastructure. So um, again, with the 2016 permit, it enhanced all of these MCMs that have been part of the program since 2003 and added additional water quality based requirements for impaired waters or anywhere that there was a total maximum daily load or TMDL established. And because Milford, um, where it is in proximity to you know, the Charles River and the Charles River watershed, you are subject to uh, a phosphorus uh, TMDL in which that there is this phosphorus control plan or PCP that the town mm. is actively drafting. Um, I've been working with Scott, Scott and Elizabeth on that over the last couple of years. So, next slide. So again, what is an MMS for? That stands for Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System. It's basically all of these drainage components that discharge uh, your stormwater or you know rainwater uh, to the waters of the U.S. So it com it's comprised of you know catch basins, manholes, pipes, ditches, swales. They do not go to a treatment plant. They go directly out to mm -hmm. you know your streams, rivers, ponds, etc. So it's just a quick map of your existing infrastructure. Um, you know, there's 86 miles of drainage pipe, over 200 of the outfalls that are discharging um, your drainage. There's BMPs, thousands of catch basins, manholes, you get the point. So the, the good housekeeping and pollution prevention piece is a, is a large component of what the highway department does on top of all of the other things, construction, paving, you know, bike trails, snow walks, and everything else. So. It is, it is a heavy lift, um, and it's currently managed um, mostly by the highway department, but uh, the engineering department does play a good uh, role in helping Scott manage um, the day-to-day, -day, and mostly in reporting and the site plan reviews. So when new construction projects come in, those site plan reviews um, need to be evaluated and make sure that the stormwater um, is managed appropriately when a property is accepted and the as -built comes in, managing those documents and the stormwater um, pieces to that. And then there's also an annual budget allotted for consulting services like environmental partners. So we come in and assist the town also with all of the you know program management, reporting, um, some of the education and outreach, all of the mapping, sampling, inspections, so on and so forth. So again, it is, it, is a, it is a big program to begin with, and then the phosphorus control plan just adds this extra level of complexity for Milford. Um, so, you know, in talking with Scott and Elizabeth and just kind of going through this phosphorus control plan and what the future looks like, it just becomes more evident that you need another body in town to kind of help manage this. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe more resources, maybe a uh, funding source um, to kind of keep it moving forward. And Natalie, if I may, yes. real quick, the reason that we've got the phosphorus control, uh, control is mm -hmm. because we're lucky enough to have the Charles River. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, more than 50% of the town is in the Charles River watershed, mm -hmm. so that whole area um, is looked at in this phosphorus control plan of how we can reduce those discharges. Thank you. Correct. Yeah, so, and I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because the PCP in itself could be a whole meeting. Um, but, you know, the Charles River Watershed Association is really working hard to try to help the municipalities that fall within, you know, this area. Obviously, it is, there is a high target. For example, in the MS4 permit, it looks at all of these communities and kind of calculates based off of land use and impervious cover how much they think the town is contributing to um, that watershed. So for example, for phosphorus reduction, if the requirement listed in the permit for Milford is 17 or 1,759 pounds per year. And some of the you know rough estimates the Charles River watershed um, is looking at, they're assuming $100,000 per pound of removal over 20 years. 
And that's looking at design, construction, maintenance, management. It's a big number. And obviously you're not alone. There's other communities um, that are they're looking to pool resources or what's the best way to kind of look at a regional approach to um, you know, coming up with a plan to, you know, put in BMPs, what do we do with our catch basins and street sweepings and what else can we do that would help um, this discharge and this runoff. Um, but just to back up, the MS4 says that the town needs to have a phosphorus control plan in place now. So that's why we're thinking about this. What do we have in place for non-structural controls, which is all of your catch basin cleanings and your street sweepings and your litter collection program, but then also structural controls. So looking at all of the BMPs on municipal land, the new BMPs you just put in at town park, where else do you have property that we could put in something that could treat? Just, just um, for some perspective. Yeah, sure. For a sec, um, I, we did that, you, you mentioned town park. Mm -hmm. The total phosphorus reduction was under 20 pounds for all that work. Right. That's all it is. For all that work, you get 20 pounds. Wow. And I think that was close to about $400,000 worth of work. Sure. So, and, and, and what's what's our um, um, number now with frost with what phosphorus at, at the uh, uh, Cedar Swamp Pond or the, the, the tributary? The seventeen fifty nine is what they've calculated. Right? Yeah, oh wow! Calculated as our um, contribute contribution to the Charles River, um, and it's it's based on you know mostly impervious area, um, but and. Um, wanted to get into this a little bit later, but this is one of the one of the reasons that I think we need a stormwater position is sure. it, there are existing stormwater BMPs, um, there's detention basins and infiltration basins that are on sites all over the place, but nobody, DEP, when they did that calculation, didn't include any reductions that came from those. Right. Um, because they don't have the information to be able to make that calculation. Now, now, could they get that from, like, I know phosphorus reduces the uh, dissolved oxygen in, 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 a, in a body of water. By just taking dissolved oxygen, can they determine something how severe? <coughs> because then, now from there would be the eutrophication with the uh, growth of plants right. and, and whatnot that you see occasionally there. Sure. You know, but. Sure. Um, well, and, that's, and that's why we built things like the stormwater um, wetland at the corner of Dilla and Sumner because. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. The plants in that type of system use up the phosphorus right and so then less phosphorus goes down the river so we we will get credit for that one because okay. that's something that we're so so like you said that that, that that 1759 is a, is a calculation is it, it calculation? isn't an actual correct okay right thanks correct. thank you right so by retrofitting some of our existing bmps we can make them work for mm -hmm. right um, but like she said they're not included in that number right right, right. And just the, the the task of figuring out all of the existing stormwater BMPs, going back to you know when the stormwater regulations were enacted, and finding all of those plans and those stormwater reports from those those hearings, and trying to figure out you know exactly how much phosphorus removal you guys could get credit for in all of these other development developed lots. It's just a t it's a it's a it's a big task. Make, make sure we get a lot of credit because I'm looking at 175 million dollars. <laughs> that's that's our new high school. Oh, right. exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. It's a high, it's a big number, and you're not one so of them. I understand. Yeah. Definitely know this. That's right. Absolutely know this. So yeah. Thank I you. understand that it's a it's basically a mandate, mm. yeah. but under the current what we're doing right now, what is really the harm that's being done? Financially or no, environmentally? No, environmentally. environmentally. There's, uh, I mean, look, is it significant? Can, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's just unfortunately, it's just the discharge of untreated water into the. They've figured out that you know just that impervious cover and the time it takes for the rain to travel across you know the pavement and take all of those pollutants with them without treatment. Mm -hmm. So now the the plan going forward is you know every every stormwater collection system on each street or each cul-de-sac should have some sort of pretreatment. Or it's That's a good idea. That yeah. is the end yeah. goal. You know, yeah. obviously it's going to take time. You know, and we have over, over, th over 3,000 of them, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like when sewer and stormwater were combined. Yeah. You know, that was, was, was it a problem? Well, it wasn't a problem until it was a problem. And then it was a really big problem. So, you know, 
is there pollution going on? Absolutely. Mm. And they're putting limitations as to how much pollution is allowable, just like they do with anything else. And we're looking at the most cost-effective way to meet those requirements. Um, and I, I, until I came until I came on board and learned about the phosphorus portion of this, I wasn't really a big fan of the idea of, of the utility. But the I, I think it's inevitable, quite frankly, um, given the direction that the, the phosphorus removal plan is, is heading, um, because. One of the big things is there's not enough municipal land in Milford for us to meet the, that reduction requirement. So if we need to go outside of municipal land and, and motivate private entities to help us reduce, sure. then mm -hmm. I don't know how else you do that other than to tax the bigger contributors of the, po of mm. the pollution mm -hmm. and then credit people that, um, that bit less. do something to, to mm -hmm. make it less. So mm. um, I, don't, I don't think we're close. Uh, you know, I think we're a few years away from really considering starting the utility. But it's definitely something that I think we need to be preparing sure. for because this is like a kickoff to this. So right. I think it's a great idea. Good. So um, in working, you know, with, with Highway and Engineer, we kind of just wanted to get a sense of what the, um, and this was, we kind of did a feasibility study of what a utility in town would look like. So we're trying to take a sense, or trying to get a sense of what the town was spending annually. Um, and we kind of came up with, a, you know, roughly $565,000 annually, again, rough numbers a percentage of the annual budget for highway salary, because a portion of their time goes to drainage-related activities, a portion of the engineering salary, and then you know what it costs for all the street sweeping, catch and cleaning, miscellaneous projects, um, you know, consultant fees, that gets you your baseline drainage. And then if you want to do anything on top of that, big capital drainage projects, if you have a BMP retrofit or some sort of dam or culvert maintenance, you know, that could go up to close to $865,000. And again, this is just general MS4, you know, maintenance and uh, compliance does not include any of the anticipated expenses of when that phosphorus control plan comes into play. Is that currently what we're spending, Natalie, or is that what you're it's saying? An, an yes. estimate. An estimate. Yes. It's so an estimate. It's an estimate of what the 565 is what the town of Milford is currently spending on drainage-related drainage. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep. <coughs> wow. And it comes from a number of different places, mm -hmm. but currently. Yeah, and salt water comes out of my budget. Some comes out of, uh, we have a storm water um, article that we do every couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. We're doing grant work. And yep. Whatever we can do. Yeah. Sure. Yep. So then looking forward, you know, it's going to be the continued annual compliance, you know, what was just in that, that spreadsheet, and then the phosphorus control plan is really going to look like, again, those non structural it wants enhanced street sweeping, enhanced catch basin cleaning programs, enhanced yeah. leaf litter. Enhancing those programs is going to be more equipment, more staff, more time, you know, the just exponential uh, cost increases there. And then with the structural controls, it's operating and maintaining and documenting and tracking all of your existing structures and then all of the new ones. You know, you have to design, build all of these additional BMPs. I was just saying, so when Scott's dumping salt on the road in the wintertime, he's helping on one end and hurting himself <laughs> exactly. on the other. Well, exactly. yes and no. We used to use sand. Remember the olden days? Yeah, the yeah. Freeway? Well, yeah. sand is no good. It, right. it goes against what we do. We do not use sand. We use salt. What salt's doing? Well, that's coming. Yeah. About that. <laughs> <laughs> the variety of caravans are coming soon. But, yeah. yeah, so we eliminated sand probably 10 years ago completely. And, and I think we can continue for probably continue for some period of time uh, absorbing the physical um, requirements of cleaning catch basins and street sweeping. That can that can kind of get absorbed into his budget. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the way I think it should be, but it, it could continue that way if a utility isn't brought on board. But at the documenting part of it is it needs to come from someplace else. He, that's not something his department can do. It's not something that one town engineer can do, no. which is why we have environmental partners. Yeah, it's and just too much. There, mm -hmm. you know, I one of the 
they can come and tell us how to sort of approaches there are available, but I think that having somebody that works in Milford and understands Milford um, can also help guide them in what works best for us. You know, there's whether or not there's multiple ways to set up a stormwater utility. What works best for Milford? Should we, you know, is it mostly towards residential or mostly towards commercial? Somebody that understands what mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what we already expect of, I think, our commercial and industrial. Right. Um, See, I would flip it the other way around. I would say to myself, what would the cost savings be to the town if it was somebody's sole responsibility to manage storm water? You know, in As other words, these to two people have plenty to do. You know, yeah, we do. what if it became somebody's sole responsibility to manage it? Right now, we're yes, you're, 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 you're yeah. proposing, yeah. and you're, yeah. pro and you're proposing that's exactly. the, that's, that's the, the, the position. The right. position, that's right. it. Uh, we're not trying to get rid of our consultants. <laughs> no, 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 but no, the consultants will be dealing with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is right. really the right. beginning phase. Right. right. Exactly. Where's it right. going to go? Right. Mm. But they can set an army of people out to test, you know, test our outfalls. So they can do that. We can't do that. We don't have the command. Right, 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 yeah. We just don't have that makes sense. Okay. So yeah, so that's why we're here today. We're proposing this stormwater management position. You know, it'd be the water manager, it'd be, it'd be the town employee working with highway and engineering for a number of reasons that we've already mentioned. But you know, work with the highway department and engineering to you know manage and make and the maintenance of existing EMPs. <coughs> work with consultants more efficiently. Also be able to kind of review and know the local regulations and incorporate the requirements from a state that works best, you know, for you. We can make recommendations, but someone in-house that does the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. will probably have a better handle on that. Exactly. And then in a couple, you know, a year or two or whenever if we're ready, they have the background and can help develop and administer that fee or funding program. And you just, like Elizabeth just said, you just need somebody that understands your community mm -hmm. um, in that in that's very really important now. So again, how do we yeah. continue to fund this? We can continue to carve it out of your general fund and attach revenue or figure out a way to keep increasing, you know, your budgets or highway funds to cover costs. It's just not gonna not gonna cut it. Uh, there are grants, uh, opportunities for specific projects, and obviously that's not gonna go away, but that takes time to apply and manage mm -hmm. those grant programs uh, or SRF loans. Um, so establishing a utility, we're just kind of here to remind you of that, that process and think, start thinking about it. Um, it's not new. There's almost 2,000 utilities across the United States. New England's just a little more resistant to change. Next slide. Um, there's a, more than 30 active stormwater utilities in New England. This just kind of lists out where they are in Massachusetts, Vermont, New England, Connecticut. I believe there's a lot of them that be established in New Hampshire soon. The, the graph on the right I thought was interesting. You know, once that 2016 permit came out was in effect, it, that the numbers shot up because everyone saw, you know, the potential, the need. You know, you're not alone. Other communities don't know where they're gonna come up with the funds to keep this program going. So, uh, next slide. So again, just an example. Newton's been around since 2006, so they're a great, you know, place to kind of look and see how they changed and adapted. There's all kinds of different ways to set it up with residential fee structures um, and then charging larger res residential, commercial, or industrial in different tiers and different levels. Um, or locally, Groton implemented a fee a couple years ago. Theirs is small, just based flat fee, 40 bucks a year, based on any parcel that has impervious cover and was developed. They generate about two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Just kind of helps them okay, keep the program going. Mm -hmm. They'll adjust as needed. Uh, Franklin just started theirs uh, uh, last or a couple months ago now, July first. Um, theirs is a very specific program based on a previous cover per lot. So you go to this website, you click on a map, interactive, zoom into your address. It shows you your driveway, your house, your shed in the back. If you have a patio calculates your impervious cover and tells you your rate structure. Hmm. Um, you know, and then they're very heavily focused on, on treatment uh, credits. So if somebody were to take out their back driveway and put in, you know, impervious pavers mm -hmm. or, you know, gravel, then they get a credit and their their fee gets reduced. That's it's just true. a way to, like Elizabeth said, incentivize commercial industrial. You can also incentivize residential units. Um, 
but that's also going to take somebody to manage this program. So starting out with just a flat fee, that's easy, brings in some sort of revenue, um, you know, and it can it can grow and change over time. <coughs> Tweak it as you move down the road. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so again, we've already kind of touched on this. How does it work? It operates very much like a sewer or drinking water utility. It's just a dedicated funding revenue for operation, maintenance, and capital expenditures. There's three typical rate structures. Again, flat fee, uh, looking at impervious cover, or that parcel by parcel impervious cover analysis. So there are different ways to approach it. And again, we've touched on this. You can develop incentives for different um, property types. <coughs> to kind of get some credit and incentivize this to grow so you can get as much credit as possible um, for the town. So again, we did a feasibility study just looking at some of these revenue projections. So it just gives you some examples. If you were to just take $50 a year times 8,373 parcels, you'd come up with 400 and close to $420,000 annually. You bump that up to 100 year per year, you're over eight, you know, $800,000 annually. So that's just a flat fee, you know, looking at the number of parcels. Again, you could, pe people might be a little resistant to that. They might prefer you give residential units a little bit of a break mm -hmm. and focus more on the non-residential or the places that have more pavement, mm -hmm. more impervious cover. So again, there's multiple ways to kind of look at this, but these were just playing with rough numbers to see what the town could do and what you would, um, you know, come up with. So next steps, and this is really in closing, you know, we really uh, came here today to talk to you about, you know, the permit, where it's going, you know, how complex it is, and we would love to advertise, or, you know, Elizabeth and Scott are ready to advertise that stormwater manager position and add that um, for the town, and then just to kind of start, keep thinking about how would a utility work, how would we implement it. What agency would administer? Would it go through, you know, existing billing systems? Would you create a new billing system? How would you define define your different residential uses? You know, mm. would you break out condos and apartments versus single family homes? Are there anybody? Is there any properties that would be exempt? And there's, like Elizabeth said, this is a couple years out, but we just want to start thinking about the best way to approach it for the town. Mm. Um, and then. I think the biggest thing is just really a public involvement and education program. You're just getting this idea out there. You know, this is an unfunded, unfunded mandate. Yes, the MS4 permit is there. With the town has to do a cost first control plan and figure out where, yeah. what we're going to do in the next 20 years. But you can, you know, spin it a few different ways. Yes, it's for the stormwater permit, but it's also for, you know, protecting your water, protecting your natural resources. You can also benefit from flood mitigation. You know, mm -hmm. depending on where you put these BMPs, you can kind of, you know, approach it a few different ways. So, just, and then, sorry, go ahead. Just a, uh, a question for education. Yeah. Would it be wise only because it involves water, and now, of course, the town owns the water company, to put it under the jurisdiction of the sewer department or under the current water department, or should a totally different utility be created? Mm -hmm. I think part of that question, the answer to that question is going to be in how we set up the fees, because um, one of the other um, examples was for the assessor's office to do it. If we're going to do, um, if you're going to be doing the credit-based, which is certainly the one I think is the easiest pill to swallow, um, then you're going to be relying on a system like GIS um, and it, it really comes down to more of a, it's more like the assessment of the property and what, you know, is, is so it might fit better in there if we go with that kind of, um, um that yeah. model. In the assessor's office? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. But, but would that be more or less added to a tax bill would probably be the, an easy way as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, is, yeah, this with, with, the, with the description, you know, this is uh, let's say an extra right. fifty dollars, right. you know, for and you list why and whatnot after the education process too, right. and you can see there's a lot of moving parts here, and you know, I'm glad we are just kicking off this now because it will be at least two years before we, we get this going, and I like the idea of having someone to manage this as well, right. where it frees up a lot of the uh, time and, and energy that you have to do, where they could focus on that one aspect, which is very important, where it's a mandate. I mean, there's no, it, what if we don't do it? Let's just say we, we you know, <laughs> we want to be spiteful. That's everybody's, that's everybody's favorite question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And I'm gonna tell you that I, since I got here, I can't believe the number of things that we 
didn't meet what we were supposed to, and you may get away with it for a little while, yeah. but eventually it catches up to you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have a stormwater body. Mm -hmm. You don't want that. No. I don't, I, it, yeah. Yeah, we got to have a couple of stormwater bodies. <laughs> right. It's, mm -hmm. so, and, uh, and Rick, too, Rick, that you'd be huge. A town administrator is huge in a stormwater right. body. What do they what say? The, the, the old saying is, lives have little legs. <laughs> <laughs> you can't run fast enough to catch up to yeah. you. <laughs> what, I, what, I, what I've realized. Right, it does. Right, have it does. Been it does. We have. We yeah, have been. It does happen. Part of mm -hmm. the few audits of first times. Do you DDP doesn't currently have any um, cons financial consequences for not meeting the, the requirements of the permit, but they will. Yeah. And the more it's a lot, it's a lot cheaper to take care of these things now when we have a good scope of options and we can make a good plan and figure out what works for us than to wait until there is a financial um, incentive <laughs> for us to comply. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I certainly don't think we need to be ahead of everybody else mm -hmm. in, in meeting all of, but no. we, need, we need to stay. We need to get, ahead some, of get the some curve, movement, yeah. I, I guess is where I would like to be. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we're not, we're not way, you know, we're not you know, jumping way ahead. We, no, we do, right. what we have to do what you have to do. Yeah, yeah. but we don't want to fall behind either. No. Exactly. You mm -hmm. don't want to knock on the door, we're from the DP and we're here to help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that, it, it will, that will come. When it will come, I don't know. Yeah. But if we don't, yeah, we just show you're proactive. In, in your exactly. in, in your improvement in your improving the environment in the in waterways of, of Milford, which is needed anyway. So right. for the uh, future generations. Charles River Washington right. is working with us. They've gotten us grants and helping us. You know, they like to see their river clean. Right. You know, and they are definitely on board with anything we need and any help they can get us. So they've been really yeah, absolutely helpful. awesome. Good. Awesome. Good to hear. I think the next slide is just the Q and A. So. You're going to have the prettiest fish in the room. I think, I think we were asking questions before that. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Anything else? Tom? Well, as the MBTA improves, you know, improves, then I think you're going to see more attention to this, you know, from various state officials. Um, I, I think there's a lot of questions that still have to be answered. Sure. You know, where, where do you place this particular department or responsibility? Um, it's no discredit to any other department, but the fact is if it became burdensome for you and for you, why isn't it going to become burdensome for somebody else? Mm -hmm. And how do we evaluate that? So, my sense for two of years. <laughs> right to figure that out. <laughs> well, you, you don't want to do it to the point where the person you put in that position is so overwhelmed where their opportunity to go elsewhere mm -hmm. and not be doing, you know, is overwhelmed because they're putting the resources where they should be to accomplish the task. So I, I don't think it's simply as easy to say that, well, you know, the folks who have to go out and evaluate properties for tax assessments can simply yeah. go and do this as well. Um, not a, yeah, not as all. much as I, I, as much, I've listened to everything you've said. You know, do I think it should be in engineering? Obviously no, because it's you and you, right? Should it be down the highway? No, but are you going to have to work hand in glove? Most certainly. But I, I just, <clears throat> I think to try to find the expedient place, simply to place it there, is, it's just not the right approach. I, I, I honestly, my sense of things, you know, we'll just put it down at sword. That's their problem. We don't have to worry about it. it no, it's it's all of our problem. That's what we've been discussing here tonight. Yeah. And and I think that's a, the stormwater position that we're proposing um, would be very much working with Scott and I. We're not looking to offload it to anybody else at this point no. in any way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not suggesting that. Yeah, the utility is going to may it may make more sense for another department other than. 
mm -hmm. these two to administer the utility, but the actual stormwater position would be entirely kept between these two departments. Mm -hmm. Right, but I mean, it, the more I think about it is, you know, well, should we put it with water or should we put it with sore? Uh, my sense is neither. Right yeah, now, yeah, neither, exactly. Right and, and that's now, something I mean, you can work on during, you know, this, you know, this, this time. Well, should we put it in the assessor's office simply because they go out and evaluate properties? Keep in mind, hmm. they don't get onto every property, hmm. right? You don't have to admit them onto your property. That's a fact. So the utility itself would probably have to be looking at the properties. So well, that's that's my sense of things. I, I think that I mean, you're talking about utility. You're probably talking about you start with the top person that, that can do it, but the help underneath them is where it's, mm -hmm. it's going to. Yeah, it's no, it's definitely a. That's all they have to have. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a huge undertaking. And there's other there's towns that have a stormwater. I was going to ask you that. I was going to say, if, 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 if you can more or less give us, you know, during your uh, study, and you know, this was just a kickoff, like we mentioned, yes. you know, and Tom had some great suggestions and ideas and questions, so did Mike, and um, it, it, whether the municipalities are doing, you know, how are they doing, what department is it, is it, is it uh, separate, yeah. or is it with uh, another department, uh, um, and, and is the person full-time, is it part-time, where, where are they stationed, you you're know. assistant town engineer slash stormwater manager? Sure. So it, you could kind of you can, have multiple duties. Right. You know, but, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But some have, you know, once that position is established and then you get a utility, you have that funding mechanism, then you also have additional sources for those salaries and then divisions grow. You know, that person needs an assistant. You need mm -hmm. a part-time person just to manage social media and public education. Sure. You know, um, so yeah. yeah, we could definitely send a couple different examples of mm -hmm. how towns are structuring this. Good. But and, I, and I think towns of similar demographics, sure. and I mean as far as properties go, and industry mm -hmm. versus residential and how they're doing things. To compare us to Groton is like comparing right. apples to no, oranges. Right. Yes, exactly. exactly. Very, very, you know, different. Right. Um, to compare us as far as surfaces go to a city like Newton is more, I think, applicable. Sure. Because you have an industrial base, you have a commercial base, you have residential, you know, and you can scale that based on the different communities. But, you know, some of the smaller communities, you know, even Franklin, I think, might be appropriate, but some of the other smaller communities, like Amillus, yeah. it's, you know, you, you're, right. you're just talking a whole different sphere to sure. get the, the bottom line. You know, I really want to give some thought to, you know, I, I don't disagree with, yes, you put this position and they're an assistant here and then all, and you wait for it to grow up. You know, my thing is, if you think it's going to grow up, and I think it is, mm -hmm. then start out in, in that realm. And very much like everything else in, in the community, departments working with each other to accomplish a mutual goal to the benefit of the entire community is always there. I think to time into a department, and now we're going to break them out of that department and create their own department. And I think it's just going to cause more confusion for the community as far as just what you were saying, public education, here's where we are and here's where we have to go. This isn't by choice. You know, this is training the puppy and you got to lead them along on the leash because they're dragging us down the road. And it's been going on for many years. Yeah. You, know, you know, Scott has dealt with this, I know, mm -hmm. because of my previous position. I know Scott's dealt with this for many years. Right. Um, and when he first raised it, everybody looked at him like he had three heads. You know, you, you, it's going to cost us what? <laughs> yeah. well, here it is. Yeah. 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 Here, yeah. And here it is. And, and I don't disagree. You don't want to be the one that doesn't comply when they decide to wake up, you know? Sure. You wake up the bear, the bear's going to chase you down the road. So I, I think we have to take a serious look at how we're going to structure it. Structure it. And then I think we have to take a serious look. I know there was talk about advertising a position. Um, 
you know, I, I have to know an awful lot more about that position and sure. what the kind of values are that are out there for a position like that. And, yeah, we put um, some examples together, but we, yeah, mm -hmm. we can regroup. We need to yeah. get some of that information. Well, I do have concerns because my sense is that even a position, at least what I'm hearing, I think that this is going to be a professional position. I would not want to make them an assistant to someone else who it's not their primary responsibility. Because um, I think that you're undercutting their accountability by undercutting their responsibility. Yet you, you're still going to compensate them as a professional manager. Um, and hopefully you get someone that's really competent and they understand what their needs are right. to accomplish what needs to be done. As far as what rates are going to be, I, even that. Uh, if you said to me today, make a decision, you know. <laughs> no, just, just, just to give us no, ideas. Sir, no, no, yeah. I, I think the, the information you provided us yeah. is extremely helpful yeah. Yeah. in yeah. how different approaches uh, particularly as it relates to, you know, some communities, it's a flat rate and, you know, right across the board. Others, it's, well, how much of your particular piece of property is considered to be, quote, a difficulty. Right. You know, it's impervious. So um, I think you're going to hear from a lot of residents that, hey, I'm not paying for the parking lot at the shop of all. Right. Um, this is going to, you know, even at $50, and I'm going to say to you, I think $50 for a lot of residents, particularly those that are on fixed incomes that, you know, are elder, retired, sure. $50 is a chunk of money. You know, that that's groceries. So, um, you know, I saw in there, Joe, to you, you know, give this organization and, and they're exempt. I don't think anyone's exempt. Okay. If you have a parking lot, you have a parking lot. I didn't, you know. Uh, These are just the things you need to document in yeah. the decision making. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I say that out, I say that out loud, yeah. but, but yeah. The, the fact remains, you know, we're going to have residents that, that $50 is far more costly to them individually than a rate that we would give to one of the organizations, um, you know, based upon beliefs or, or what the case may be. I, I, I think you're going to see people, well, I think you're going to see people rising up anyway. I mean, that's, that's something has to be done, and we, we know that. Um, we've known it for years. So, you know, I, I think you had a great presentation. Mm -hmm. I think there's, you give us a lot of information, there's still a lot of questions and hmm. things that have thing. to be looked at, but I, I think you've done a fantastic job. Great job, job. great Thank presentation, you. gave us some ideas and yeah. some adjustments have to be made, of course, and just to fit Milford, to, to fit what we need. Right. So, great. You need Michael? I think even, you know, what you said earlier, you know, even this being the start of it, for some ungodly reason, if we should get a phone call tomorrow, at least we're showing that we're mm -hmm. proactively right. heading in the right direction. May not be exactly where you want us, but right. you know, we didn't take the plan and stuff in the closet. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so I think that's very encouraging. You know, it's very informative. Encouraging to me that you guys are taking this serious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. encouraging. No, it is. Like you said, you know, you and Liz, it's yeah. not going away. You know, <laughs> if you think you're no. going to close your eyes and it's going to disappear, it's not going away. For sure. So let's stand up and address it. But there are going to be a lot of people that find it discouraging, and something tells me my phone's going to be ringing. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's well, well, we give them uh, DEP's number. <laughs> exactly. I have to find a new grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What a Franklin. They're already in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, sure. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I mean, there's always going to be opposition, yeah, yeah. right? But I mean, when you see the big picture and you see, you know, what the town has been doing and how much you're spending and what the future holds, I mean, so, and people pay hundreds of dollars for cell phone and cable. Mm -hmm. I mean, 50 bucks. Scratch tickets. You really just need to put it in perspective. I do understand the low income and, you know, senior yeah. housing. Maybe we make accommodations for their pricing. And it's also, I think there's a huge component about the, the public education. Like, people <coughs> don't understand right. um, if they're already paying for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. going to continue yeah. paying for it. So, you know, what, there's... There's reasons why the stormwater utility makes sense, and I, I understand people. You know, I, I guess one of my fears with the stormwater utility is like, well, I can't control how much it rains, so how can you charge me? Mm -hmm. But and you can't control how much it rains. However, you can control how much of that rain makes it to the system. Mm -hmm. And so, it, just like with the water and sewer, you you do have the ability to um, to. Uh, lessen your impact. Right. Lessen your. You and, know, and that's what they want to see. And right. so right. you know, you know, understanding that we're not talking about dealing with the rain, we're talking about dealing with the runoff. Right. When it rains, mm -hmm. it you know the, the it's a it's a for me it's a, a something I don't even think about, but it's something that most people don't you know mm -hmm. don't understand. That, yeah, that that's right. a concept that they just. You know, <coughs> why would they think about it? Right? Exactly. Um, so that's all I think about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, see? <laughs> I, I think one of the things that we're looking for, um, it, 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 I, I've sort of gone back and forth as to whether or not we should be focusing on, and I think this is what you were touching on, uh, Tom, was whether or not we should be focusing on kind of setting up the utility and the department, or we should be doing the position first. I think that was what I was hoping to get out of, uh, and I'm not that I'm asking for an answer right now, but that was what I wanted to kind of get your guidance on, um, what you thought made the most sense for. Well, if you set up the, the, uh, the utility itself, you'd then find out what is needed here, and then you can then adjust the position to that, of what will be needed you know, to fulfill that. Uh, we use that position to set up the utility and to Work with the consultants. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I think it's it's my my sense is it's a matter of developing a job description and understanding based on the marketplace that's out there and the responsibilities we're looking at. Whether they're a standalone department or they work for someone else, nevertheless, their responsibilities hmm. aren't going to change that much. Right they're going to be pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my sense of things is you, you start with, here's the professional position that we need, here's why we need it, as far as the responsibilities that go with it, here's the cost factor, um, which in my mind drives a lot of where you put them. I think a community this size and my sense of expectation that do I think that everyday people have a real grasp on all of this? No, no more than I do. No. Um, I've learned a lot of it, you know, over the years from Scott, um, and then this evening as well. So. I think there are going to be a lot of questions, a lot of answers, and yes, we all have cell phone bills that are X dollars, and we all have cable, and we all have, but we all also know that when we go to Shaw's or Big Y, the price of chicken went up, sure. you know, and you have mouths to feed, and yes, I can cut back on my water usage by not watering my garden or doing whatever. I don't know about saw. I disagree with that, Liz. Um, you, you're going to have to show me how to cut back on saw. Um, I, I just can't get there, at least in my head. Um, but I, I, back to, I, I think we have to develop based upon experiences elsewhere, and that's what I said, similar experiences. For a community of this size, that position. And then from there, figure out how we place it 
within mm -hmm. the governmental structure. And, and what's working for the municipalities? Like, like Franklin, you said, has one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's about little, same size of ours, maybe, you know, the little. Yeah, yeah. I, was, uh, that's, I found Franklin to be probably the most interesting of mm -hmm. the pieces um, because it's close by and, and right. it's, you know, not abnormally different than us. Um, and it took them several years to get the stormwater utility passed. And they started with, um, you know, a stormwater person under, they have a DPW. So, and that's the other quirk with Milford is that, you know, even my position is typically, the town engineer is I, more often than not something that's underneath the, um, DPW, DPW director umbrella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, the trying to find the right place here is is a little more, mm -hmm. you know, complicated. It's unique, and it's going to be harder to find an example. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you go the, by. But we can figure it out. And we, we, and we learn, out. And we learn as, as we go along. It's it's new to us. It's new to everybody, mm -hmm. right now. Even though it's been in, in existence since two thousand three, <laughs> it's still <laughs> something that we're just starting to really get running now on this, you know. It's developed. Mm -hmm. Over those years, 30000 a year we spent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're over 500 Yep, yep. Rising. Wow. <clears throat> so we're kind of like travelers insurance. We like a bunch of small umbrellas instead <laughs> of one big one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, and I think that's, that's the thing we have to look at, you know. Are, are we going to create a big umbrella or are we going to have another smaller umbrella that fits into mm -hmm. the big scheme of things right. in the best interest of the community. And, and that's, you know, much of this uh, really boils down to decisions for town meeting. I mean, there's been discussions in the past about, you know, DPW, et cetera. I don't know if that's the approach. If it is and town meeting believes it is, then so be it. But as you indicated, all of this ends up at town meeting, um, where people have the opportunity to, their elected officials, to vote uh, in the best interest of not only themselves, but their constituents in their precinct. So, um, well, I think it's important, too, whatever direction we go, that we do it once <laughs> and we do it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no question. That's yeah. why I, I was just suggesting that, you know, I think the first approach is to work on the position and what are the responsibilities so that people understand the scope mm -hmm. of what that person to me and asked to develop. Right, and, and the average person might not even understand the responsibility. And you're asking for someone. Mm -hmm. you know. and, and there's the responsibility for <clears throat> town government to have those series of discussions to try to answer those questions. Um, well, I think this is a great start right here. Right. Anybody mm -hmm. watching knows that. Anybody watches this this meeting tonight? Mm -hmm. I think they, you know, especially the presentation it was very yeah, very informative. To understand, very informative. Right. It was a good good start. Excellent. Yep. And I hope this is the start. I don't. Mm -hmm. you know, we have to keep this. No, we got definitely we have to. You know. Yep. Absolutely. So if you, we'll give you a, what, a, a couple of months maybe to work on something, just an idea. Yeah. If you come up with anything new, come see us again. Tell us where we are so everybody's informed as well as we go along. Sure. I'm going to hold you in a couple of months. I mean, if you can come no, up no, the like next I said, 10 days or so. 10 days, you know. <laughs> schedule the meeting. But I, what we're saying is yes. yeah, yeah. keep moving Keep, keep moving and, and let us know. Okay. And I think even some sample, you know, from these other towns, if you come upon those job descriptions, not that that's mm -hmm. going to be the job we description know. here. We have that. We've already we started. started. <laughs> but it's an opportunity for us to look at, mm -hmm. wow, look at the scope of this. So, right. Oh, that's not right. so bad, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. to see, so that we start to develop a foundation of information mm -hmm. so that when people ask us questions, we almost know a little bit about what we're talking about. <laughs> Prior meeting we had, you had job descriptions. I remember seeing them yeah, and okay. reviewing them. This was some months ago, but yeah. when we met at uh, the room upstairs. So I know they have job descriptions. I know they're yeah, at that know, process level already. Sat, um, yeah. We've looked at different job descriptions, and they're all a little bit different, they're mm -hmm. the same. So 
So we have to kind of, you know, something that's geared to Milford, with the weed that we need, exactly. Exactly. with with the Charles River here, and you know, various right. other areas. And I think that's what we'll, you know, you know, that's what we'll work on mm -hmm. um, is trying to put together something now that now that we know that you are, um, it, like he said, it's it's a relief to hear that you're not throwing us out. No, <laughs> no you can't. Well, you, um, you show interest, that's, that's, that's right. Yeah, so you know, now that we know that this is something that you know, the selectmen are supporting and something that we it's worth spending our time putting together to come back to you and eventually go to town meeting with, I think that's really what we were looking for. Please Good. do. Thank you. Thank you. Continue. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, I, I think that's our responsibility, and I don't think there's a choice. So, we, you know, we have to meet the responsibility of what's expected of the community from DEP and from the feds, because you can't discount the feds sitting out there, because if the state's not enforcing it, they're going to step there. So I, I really appreciate it. This was a great presentation. It really was. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have Thank a you. nice evening. You See you now. Next scheduled appointment is our Assistant Town Administrator and Economic uh, Development Director, John Chabonneau. John, how are you? Good. I hardly recognize you. I keep seeing you behind your desk with your little phones on, you know? <laughs> uh, the tie's throwing people off. <laughs> yeah, if I may, Mr. Chairman, two purposes tonight. First of all, we want to introduce John mm -hmm. to everybody. Um, Thank you. He's only been here. Welcome, John. He's Thank only you. been here two months, Welcome, so yeah. Yeah. keep that in mind, number mm -hmm. one. But I'd just like to uh, have him kind of show you what he, mm -hmm. where he started, where he's looking to go. Uh, the bulk of his responsibilities in the first two months have been mainly economic development, bring him in slowly on the assistant town administrator side of it, but he's been very helpful to the office John, uh, by, in by, that respect. So. Thank you, Rick. And thank you, John, too, for, for coming here, too, and giving us an update. Um, by reading the report, you know, we all decided that you were really hitting the ground running, I'll tell yeah. you right now, and you did a lot of um, uh, progress, you know, for some initiatives that were long overdue and that we needed to have answers to. And thank you. So you have the floor to explain. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. So um, just to let uh, the board know, um, I come to Milford with about 24 years of municipal experience um, at the local and regional level as a land use economic and transportation planner previously. Um, so this gives me a chance to really focus on economic development for the first time because having been in Larry's seat before, I know how difficult it is mm -hmm. to dedicate a lot of time to economic development when staffing a planning board, because the workload for planning boards can be sure. um, can be quite substantial. So it gives me a chance to uh, focus on economic development 100% and do the outreach and the research mm -hmm. necessary to really um, you know, get things going. Um, one of the first things I did was do a windshield and a walking survey of the CA zoning district downtown and do a land use inventory to get to know that area. Um, I know that's going to be um, one of the major focuses of the upcoming update of the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. is economic development and downtown economic development. Um, another focus that I'm working on now is developing a database of every business in Milford. Um, so that's obviously going to take some time. There are a lot of businesses in Milford. I think I'm up over uh, 200 at this point. And just doing a spreadsheet, the database of every business, their address, their map, uh, parcel number, their mm -hmm. contact information, website information. And um, in the process of doing that, I've, I've actually reached out to quite a few businesses to ask them questions and you know, confirm that they're still in the current location. So starting to build the relationship with the businesses okay. and also the local commercial real estate brokers such as um, Mr. Pinto obviously um, is one of the major ones, Mr. Consigli. Mm -hmm. So um, I met with the president of the Chamber of Commerce a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to become active with the Chamber and also um, I'm going to be an active member of the 495 Metro West Partnership and also with the uh, our area subcommittee would be Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Wow. So um, those are some of the things we have going on and also obviously um, to remind you gentlemen of the uh, the site walk tomorrow morning yes. Right. Um, for the former mm -hmm. Archer Rubber Company. I've already had a chance to speak with um, a couple of you gentlemen mm -hmm. about this and um, we're going to take this a step at a time mm -hmm. because I think the first step in uh, 
couple questions for the owner is to find out what their vision is for the property. And we're going to have to get a sense of what the existing condition of the site is mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, what the, what the state of uh, whatever contamination is out there is uh, before the property can move forward and um, determine what kind of remediation needs to happen to make that parcel developable. So again, it, this is going to be a one step at a time because we may, we may gather information or obtain information as we go along that will help guide the property owner in a certain direction and my role is going to be to support the property owner and obviously mm -hmm. the Charles River Watershed Association and work together to help move this property forward. Um, it's a very visible location obviously mm -hmm. and even though it's not on um, you know, Route 109 and Route 16, it, it's a very heavily traveled, very visible mm -hmm. property. I, I come in from yeah. Sock and I go through that intersection on a daily basis. So, mm -hmm. Um, it's it's near a lot of residential housing. It's near the downtown, so I think um, I've gotten the sense the town is very interested in seeing something happening. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's, been going, it's been going on a few years now. Yeah. You know, and it's like I said, it's not only unsightly, but it could be something that could be a, an environmental problem as well. Exactly. You know, so. And the contam level of contamination obviously is going is going to help determine what can be developed on mm -hmm. the site, what level of development can happen on that sure. site. Sure. Right. So, and uh, I've also, I haven't spoken directly with the owner of the rail chair flatbed, but I've spoken with the real estate broker who assures me that his goal is to be open by the end of this calendar year. I'm going to continue to um, be the squeaky wheel and see if we can mm -hmm. get that, because I think that's, that's going to have a huge ripple effect on the downtown. That's a very strategic right. location. Um, and I think once that property develops, I think you'll see activity with other properties in the downtown start to happen. So um, that's an exciting project that I know did a lot for the town center in Hudson, and I think it can have a similar impact. Now, I saw last week they had a job fair, and he's been on the radio. He's been on the local radio station okay. talking about it as well. Yeah, trying to hire people, I guess. Um, <coughs> I guess one of the things they're incentivizing is um, workers who can walk to work. Um, so I, I think he's hoping, he can, you know, he's giving a little bit of a, a pay increase. From what I understand, to employees who can walk to work and don't have to drive to work. So, so yeah, so things are moving. I, I think the investment into the property is, is from what I said, is a little bit more than what they were anticipating. So mm -hmm. that's played a factor in, in the time frame. Okay. Thank you. You, you met with the I, I the Industrial Development Committee as well. Yeah, so okay. we are we are activating the IDC. Mm -hmm. We do have there is an article that Larry and I have been working on, where um, the membership is at seven now, and I and we feel that seven is a good membership for a committee. So mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a housekeeping article to reduce the membership officially from eleven to seven, which good. um you know hopefully we'll we'll have the support of the select board, the IDCs in support of that. Mm -hmm. And also um, one change that Rick and I talked about making when I came on board to that committee as we reactivated is to just change the title of the commission to the yeah. Economic Development Commission. Yeah. Because even though it doesn't change in the name, doesn't change the, the scope of authority mm -hmm. that the committee has, mm -hmm. I think it, 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 it makes it clear that the board um, can weigh in and uh, be a factor in overall economic mm -hmm. development and not just, not industrial, just industrial development. Yeah, because makes sense. Obviously, you know, with the way the economy is going and land use is going and um, private sector is going, um, you know, the the face of industrial development has really changed and mm -hmm. continues to change. So it's not the traditional industrial development like the former Archer Rubber Company. Correct. And so the types of uses that you know are ideal for being near a downtown or along, along the Charles River have changed dramatically. So I think changing the name of that committee is a reflection of how sure. the economy in this area has changed. Yeah, it's keeping up with the times. Yep. And you also met with the uh, Downtown Revitalization yes. Committee? we are actually meeting on September 6th. Good. First time, so Good. I've, I've met with um, a couple of members of the Revitalization yep. Committee. And so um, they're excited to get going. And one of the main things I'm, I'm going to look for from them is to weigh in on the process of the comprehensive plan update. 
Um, actually, I have, some, I have some comments into uh, Larry and the planning board to mm -hmm. kind of beef up the language and the scope of work to give the proper focus to economic development in the downtown. Um, so that's going to be one of the things that is going to be looked at very, very closely through that Excellent. process. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. And you already talked about Acharaba. Yep. In a business database, you talked about that too, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah. Very good. John also met with the planning board, was introduced to them. Yeah. Uh, so now he can form a relationship, you know, not only with Larry, but with the chair and other members. So, um, and as far as the economic development commission, we want to, I want him to explore that and look to see if we can expand what they can do rather than mm. straight IDC. Right. Uh, I know other communities not only have, uh, they have a number of members, they have some administrative people. I'm not saying we're going there, but I wanted him Here's to some ideas. any and all options. Right. Because obviously this board and the community were looking to focus on the downtown, mm -hmm. the surrounding areas to the downtown, exactly. the parks. Right. Right. Um, so basically uh, nothing's off the table to be discussed. Absolutely. And, uh, yep. That's how I want him to approach it, and that's how he has approached it. Yeah, and um, in, re in reviewing the uh, previous comprehensive plan from 2003 and some of the goals and objectives that haven't been addressed yet in terms of economic development, I realize that there are some things that can be accomplished that right now aren't the aren't the authority of any specific board. It doesn't it's outside of the downtown, but it's just general economic development that it, or maybe some physical things like I noticed. Um, one of the goals and objectives that um, has not been completely addressed is, you know, um, as you drive into town, having having some nice signs that let people know they're entering the town of Milford. And apart from mm -hmm. uh, the estate signs, the white signs right, that say right, no entry right. Milford. Yeah, so that's one of those things. That's more of a welcome. Right. Yeah. That's an example of something at the gateways of the town coming in that mm -hmm. it's not in your downtown. It falls on the outskirts of town, but as an IDC. You know, someone may look at that and say, "Well, that's not industrial development." So I think changing the name to economic development that is an that is an indirect that could have an indirect impact on really the sure. on the image of the town mm -hmm. and indirectly on economic development. Excellent. So that would be the type of thing that could be rolled into something the EDC would set. Yeah. Excellent. Like I said, this. We welcome you, and this is a position that was long overdue, and some of these projects you're doing are long overdue, and we and we welcome them as well. Tom, anything to add? I, I think you're off and running. I'm, yeah. I'm thrilled. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you focus particularly in, in dealing with the businesses. Um, I think that there's great opportunities to be more business friendly people not only create businesses but to thrive um, and I, I know there were some efforts years ago um, Rick Milani and working with the health department actually created the roadmap you, you want to open this type of business here's where you have to go right. and here are the permits you need I think we can't assume people just understand that right. um, you know, I mean, I, I would discuss with people and say, you know, you need a, a milk permit, and they look at you up. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. and that's what John we hope is going to be able to do is much more outreach. We yeah, have absolutely. we've done very yeah. unfortunately yeah. limited outreach. Right. That's going to be a big part. I expect him not to be so much in the office, but doing that outreach. And I right. think mm -hmm. as much as they know that they can contact you, is your yeah. contact and them, and that's critically important. You know, that they can just pick up the phone and call you. Exactly. You know, I, and I, I, anyone I've spoken to, I've let them know that. <coughs> so part of my role is to let me know what the town can do to, if there's something you need, if there's something we can do to help. And part of this database, and I've also done a database of vacant commercial properties. I drove around, um, I drove through all of our um, non residential zoning districts and actually did a windshield survey of vacancies and called the real estate brokers and got details on what they're looking for and the amount of space available and I let them, you know, so I'm starting to establish um, yeah. a, mm. com a, a communication with them so let them know that the town is here to work with them and not against them. Mm -hmm. Because that's easier for them to go and sell that property for purposes, whether it be rental or for sale, um, to a prospective you know, business, someone mm -hmm. that's interested. It's simply that they know that there's 
someone on this side, in the government side of things, <coughs> that can assist well, that, that person with some direction of how they get what they're trying to do accomplished. Right. I mean, with, within the means of the law requirements and the rest of it, but nevertheless, navigating your way around government's not easy. No. <laughs> and um, one, one thing I really appreciate about working with someone like Larry with his experience is we're both planners, and so I can speak his language in terms of zoning changes. And, and I can, I've, I've had to do that in previous towns like Stoughton and Rentham to get up and explain to people. I know Liz mentioned educating the public. Most people don't spend a second thinking about how the zoning bylaws affect their day-to-day -day lives or affect their, their, their businesses. So that's part of my role, too, is to help educate them as far as, hey, here's what this zoning bylaw amendment would mean for your business. And it would open up possibilities. And for instance, I know that something on the agenda tonight is uh, a rezoning of the area where former Archer Rubber is because it's currently zoned Industrial A, which is an outdated zoning district. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a, you don't want, in, in, the cur in current times, it's not ideal to have heavy industrial development so close to downtown, so close to um, multifamily residences and single family residences. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the process is to educate people on, okay, what does the current zoning allow? What will the new zoning do? Right. It will build in protections and it will be at, at the same time giving more flexibility in certain ways to developers and protecting the abutting residential areas. So um, that's that's really great in speaking to Larry is, is um, we're on the same page and we speak the same language, so that's been really helpful. Good. All right. Good. So Excellent. we can use you as a translator? <laughs> no, Larry. Larry's great. He's, yeah. I've worked with Larry for many years. I, I really enjoy working with Larry. I yeah. really do. I enjoy. I enjoy his honesty and mm -hmm. um, his dry sense of humor. And uh, I'll just give you a quick example. I won't take much more time. But um, when we were doing the rezoning, I don't know if, um, if you gentlemen are familiar with Rentham or how much you know about Rentham. But where the town hall is near the intersection of One A and 140, across the Route One down the hill where the old Crosby Valve Factory used to be that was a parcel that the town wanted to rezone because it was zoned commercial one. And that's the same zoning that Rentham has out on Route 1 near 495. So that was a very simple explanation when I would get an angry resident, or a concerned resident, I should say, who was wondering, well, why should we rezone from commercial down to a mixed-use village zoning? All I'd say is, well, here's what's allowed in commercial one now. Would you want to use car dealership on that parcel? Well, no. Would you want Walmart to go on that parcel? Well, no. And you start listening to things, and within about two minutes, they're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I understand. Because you don't want this, you're, you're downtown, you don't want the same uses in your downtown that you want out near 495. Mm -hmm. And right. so once, once you, you find a way to communicate with them in a way that someone who doesn't work with zoning yet every day, something that affects their lives, and you know, make them see how it affects their lives. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's all it takes. It doesn't, it doesn't take long most of the time. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Thank John. You, John. Thank you. Thanks, John. We're going to tie you up for a while tonight. Good luck. Okay. See you tomorrow. Yes, you are. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Special Olympics, right? Yes. Okay. N next on the agenda, we, we, uh, with no uh, town administrator's report. Uh, yes. Thank you. I actually yeah. could have had Scott do this, but. Uh, uh, one item, um, I'm very pleased that Scott, and I want to give him the credit, the Mass DOT, he's received what they call a bottleneck grant. Um, it's a grant award for up to $500,000. It will be used for improvement at the intersection of Cedar Street, Route 85, and South Main Street, Route 16, to rebuild the intersection, to make it truck friendly and reduce traffic backups. I'm sure something that Chief can speak to very well. Um, we have been assigned a design consultant for the project. The consultant team will conduct a site visit to perform a preliminary scope of work to be reviewed by MassDOD. After a completed design is approved by them, then construction funding is provided via a reimbursement-based grant. And again, uh, probably should have had Scott do this, but I want to thank him. He was the main person in applying for and securing uh, this grant. Excellent. Great. Excellent. That's, great news. Just, That's all just, I have on that. Just to, uh, to, for everybody's um, uh, a comment, you know, like I said, through this this meeting alone, so far we had every appointment uh, to help in, to help Im Im improve Milford. 
and we're very fortunate to have employees and, and, and people, department heads and whatnot, on our staff to help improve Milford. Uh, from uh, the uh, wastewater to uh, the good energy to the uh, power plant to, uh, our, uh, to, to John Ch Ch Charbonneau, what yeah. he was uh, explaining, and now this here to improve our uh, roadways. Like I said, it's uh, fan fantastic news. Uh, thank you, Rick, and thank you, too, for uh, Scott. And, Rick, can I add something to that quickly? Yeah. I just want to say from, a, from an employee's perspective, what really what really means a lot to department heads and employees is when we get the support from the leadership of the town. Thank you. Because we can't do mm -hmm. what we do mm -hmm. without the support of the select board, the planning board, and the other municipal boards. So, right. um, so really, um, that that means a lot because um, there are municipalities out there that don't always do a good job of taking the advice. Um, from their professional staff, so I want to thank you, gentlemen, for that because that that allows us to do what we what we do. Mm -hmm. well, you, thank you very much, you know what, John. If I may, Mr. Chair, sure. if I may echo to that, and and everybody who's heard me say this is that, and thank you for that, but it's really a two-way street. And I say this all the time, I could walk into town hall and you could hand me a speech and say, could you do me a favor, could you go upstairs and deliver this for me? And I would do it without a problem. But I'm smart enough to know, and the three of us are smart enough to know, that we can't do our jobs without all the employees that we have. Chris and IT, everybody in their departments, it takes, it takes good, qualified people. And, and, and the more that we have, the easier our jobs become, because we have the ability joking around when we're out in the community and somebody, as Tom said earlier, questions us, all we have to do is pick up the phone, get to the, the right department or the right department head, and we have our answers and we can get back to the citizens. So it's a, a two-way street and the three of us, I know sincerely, you know, always want to say thank you to, you know, Mr. Villani and everybody who's involved in town hall in our police and our fire and every department of this community because it, it, it makes our job a lot easier. So thank you. Sorry, Mr. No, Chairman. No problem. Thank you. Anyway, um, any, any old, old business? Um, no, sir. Michael? No, I don't have any. I don't either. Uh, on, the, on the new business, we do have a um, Milford Special Olympics uh, asked for uh, Jen Walsh coordinator of uh, special programs on behalf of the town of Milford, community uh, programs. She filed an application for a permit to obstruct uh, their, for their annual uh, 5K road race and walk to the benefit of the uh, Special Olympics to be held on Saturday, September 30th, 2023. The police chief has previously re reviewed this and has no issues. Um, again, it's um, the Milford Special Olympics. It's, uh, they would like to hold uh, it again, like I mentioned, uh, September 30th uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, and they would start at the Milford High School, uh, back to the parking lot, and then they'd take a right onto um, uh, Fountain Street. Yeah, Congress and, and, then, and, then, and then Congress and North Vine. Just that, that same area uh, that they run yeah. in, 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 the, in the loop that they make even on the um, uh, Turkey uh, run. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, the Deputy Chief, uh, I mean, Chief Falvey said that they'd meet with De Deputy Chief Tizino and they'd implement a safety plan to ensure that everything, everybody is safe during this uh, event. Um, do I have a motion or any comments on this? Yeah, I make a motion. I, you know, Jen Wall, she's been managing this for a number of years. Um, they have it down to a science, mm -hmm. and they work very closely with the uh, police department, so I'm sure that Deputy Chief Rob Ticino will uh, once again accommodate and work uh, with Jen to make sure that people are safe. But they, they have their own people that monitor things as well. Um, just to guide people along their route. So uh, I would make a motion that we approve uh, the permit to obstruct for Saturday, September 30th. Um, they have a 9 a.m. I would make it 8 a.m. to give them some room as far as registration and other things uh, until the time when they actually close the event. And the route is already established, and as I said, they'll work with the police department. Right. Uh, motion has been made, Michael. And uh, just a great event. And uh, 
look forward to it, and I would gladly second it. And I make that unanimous. I have you all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next on the agenda is a um, uh, appointment to the Milford Geriatric Authority. Attaches an email from David Consigli, Chair of the Trustees of the Milford Geriatric Authority, requesting the appointment of Sue Clark as a trustee. Uh, and, the, and that attaches also the talent bank a applications. Uh, like we do with uh, all of our appointments, we like to hear, and, and Rick, uh, through, through Rick, who contacts the uh, department head, or uh, the chairman of that committee or board, uh, and asks uh, what their uh, uh, appointment would uh, be. And like I said, it gives them an opportunity to assess their membership needs and uh, recommends a candidate based on their needs. So David did answer that for us, and he's uh, provided this email. Uh, good morning, Mr. Villani. As you know, we have lost a very important board member with Mr. Joseph Lopes passing recently. Mr. Lopes has always supported and advocated for the entire uh, facility at Countryside. His primary and major focus was always the care, concern, and support of its patients, families, and staff. In addition, Joe was instrumental in helping support multiple gold ball fundraising events that were held, including as a board member of the fundraising arm, the Friends of the Ger Geriatric Authority of Milford. We are very thankful and appreciative for his dedication and support of Countryside for many years. Countryside Healthcare has always been known as one of Milford's most valued and important assets. We make every effort to assist and help care for our disabled, our sick, our elderly, including supporting family members of our loved ones. We as a board uh, members feel it is an honor to serve, support, to dedicate our time for this special and wonderful facility. The important decision to recommend a new member does not come easy. It comes with a lot of thought and consideration, both now and for the future. I have reviewed the talent bank applications at this time, and I recommend Ms. Susan Clark for this position. Mrs. Clark served as uh, the board, uh, on the board of the Friends of uh, Geriatric Authority for uh, a number of years in the past. She eagerly provided in, uh, an endless dedication of her time, was a key contributor and so instrumental in the huge financial success when we had when we conducted the gold ball fundraising events. She'd be a true asset and have on our board of trustees. Thank you for your time and consideration in this manner. Anybody have any questions or concerns? No, I, I, you know, additionally, as you know, Sue served as the director of our senior center for many years, as well as community development. I think that she has a great sense of the needs of the community from both of those perspectives. And looking at the authority itself, you know, that's the balance of what's taking place there right now is, you know, the cost and then over on the human side of things, the value. So I, I think that uh, given her unique experiences uh, in both of those realms within the community, um, that Sue's an ideal candidate, and I would make a motion the same and offer my friend Mike Walsh the opportunity to speak. Before I second that, Mr. Chairman, if I may, and we've discussed in the past of how important it is that we reach out to the board members and to the chairman of the board, mm -hmm. of that particular board, to bring us the recommendation of who they think would be best suited to serve on that board with them with them and for me it's you know not only with with Sue's dedication and what she's done for the community for the town of Milford and over 30 years of service um, in her last uh, position director of the senior center but very simply right here in the mr. Consigli's letter she would be a true asset to have on the board of trustees mm -hmm. and to me that says it right there she'd be a true asset and with that i will gladly second mr o'laughlin's motion okay any other comments or concerns if not i'll entertain a vote all in aye. favor aye aye okay so, so sue was uh, appointed rick yep and uh, uh mr consigli gave a very nice letter too and again you know complied with what we asked uh which i thought was good um next on the agenda is a uh, 
the double tree. Uh, and it attaches an application for a one day beer and wine license from uh, the D Double Tree Hotel for a community charity arts and craft social to be held at uh, the hotel at 11 Beaver Street, Milford, Mass, on October 22nd from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. <coughs> and uh, like I said, it's going to be held at, at the facility. There's going to be a probably uh, expected 250 people, and it's beer and wine only. Uh, no, no alcohol. Um, any of any any board member have any uh, comments, questions, or concerns? I, I was just curious what, what the charity was. But just, just curiosity. Yeah, I can it's find just, out. It's just a community uh, arts and crafts. It just says community charity arts and crafts social. I, I don't have any other. Questions. I'll check on that. Yeah. Okay. Michael? You make the motion? I make a motion that we approve uh, the application at Double Tree Hotel for a com community charity arts and crafts social, uh, which will be held on uh, October the 22nd from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, beer and wine only, with an expectation of approximately 250 people. I would second that, Mr. Chairman. And I make that unanimous. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a, uh, an application by J.C. Koninsky of the Lucas Diomini uh, Legacy Foundation for a permit to obstruct for a benefit walk for suicide awareness uh, month in, in memory of her son, Lucas. The walk will be held on Sunday, September 17, 2023, beginning at 9 a.m. Parks Commission James Asim has, been, uh, has issued a permit for the use of Fino Field parking lots as well as the Louisa Lake parking lot in Gazebo. Uh, Chief Falvey has signed the permit application uh, subject to meeting with the police to work out a safety plan. And, and again, this is a very worthwhile uh, or organization. Um, like I said, I saw on TV the Milford High School um, senior day, or senior night, and, and Lucas was uh, featured. And like an organization like this, especially in today's day and age, is all worthwhile to help individuals um, who are struggling with mental illness. And they got to realize, too, that everything is fixable mm -hmm. besides what happened here. So uh, like I say, it's, it's something that we uh, help to keep this young man's memory alive and well, too, so, and, and for his family. Uh, any, anybody have any questions or concerns with this uh, application? None whatsoever. I make a motion that we approve the application to obstruct Sunday, September 17th, commencing at 9 a.m. at Fino Field uh, for the Lucas Denominee Legacy Foundation. Uh, they're expecting approximately 250 people. Hopefully they'll see far more than that. And they've worked things out with uh, Jim Asim from the parks as well as uh, Deputy Chief uh, Rob Ticino. So, uh, I'm very comfortable with making the motion. Right. Thank you, Michael. I would gladly second that, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, make that unanimous. All, all in favor, aye. Uh, next on the agenda is a uh, a letter from um, Robert Andriola from the Mist, uh, Milford Historical Commission uh, requesting the board appoint uh, Daniel L. S., uh, S. Wilson to the commission to replace James Miller, who passed away earlier this year. Um, it's uh, a dedicated and valued member of the Historical Commission, Mr. Miller, passed away a few months ago. His passing has created a vacancy on the Commission. The Commission and the, and the Associate uh, Commissions of the uh, Historical Commission unanimously request the Select Board appoint Daniel S. Ellis Wilson to fill the vacancy as a volunteer and then Associate uh, Commissioner Daniel S. Wilson actively participated in digitizing uh, museum documents and research information. He alone took the digitized uh, files and converted all of the files into individual collective searchable documents for public use. The Commission seeks to maintain ongoing continuity in order to better preserve and protect the historical and archaeological aspects of this town. Your consideration this matter is appreciated. So I guess there were s several members uh, uh, that had the, uh, uh, the talent bank application. But again, you know, the chairman and the commission 
uh, recommends uh, Mr. Wilson, and of course they explain why, mm -hmm. which I thought was very informative and, and, and very helpful in making this decision. Uh, anybody have any uh, comments or questions with this? Only that he's, he served as an associate commissioner, so he's been involved. Uh, he's simply moving up to uh, the full status. Mm -hmm. So I would make a motion that we appoint uh, Daniel S. Wilson as a commissioner of the Historical Commission. Um, as far as the other folks in the talent bank, that'll lead to a, a vacancy uh, in the associate position. So uh, I'm sure we'll see some information coming back to us sure. in the near future. Right. I would gladly second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and I make that unanimous. Uh, next on the agenda, six, is an email from Vicki Houston, who is the principal at Brookside Ele Elementary School, requesting a right turn only sign to be installed in the school parking lot. And this was sent to Rick um, by Janice Coogan from the uh, assistant uh, to the highway surveyor. Uh, the principal of Brookside is requesting a new sign to be installed in the parking lot of the school that says right turn only. It is my understanding that all new sign requests go to the select board. We will, we will write a work order once the request has been approved. And Vicki did write to uh, Janice uh, by saying, um, you know, would it be possible to get a sign for Brookside School parking lot, right turn only? I have been in touch with Milford PD, and they are aware that we are going to direct traffic to the right out of the parking lot at arrival and dismissal. If you can uh, uh, assist us, if you can get a sign, would, uh, would, uh, and what would the cost be? So anyway, and then that's when Janice uh, Coogan answered her. Uh, does anybody have any concerns or questions on this at all? No, I make a motion that we approve the recommendation to install the right turn sign uh, by the board voting for it. If the sign becomes enforceable where if it was just erected on private property, which to include public property, that's not a public way. Mm -hmm. It's not enforceable. This makes it enforceable. The police are already involved, and as far as any cost, that cost uh, would be borne by the highway department, sure. like any other side. Good. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Michael? I would second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and I make that unanimous as well. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, the um, Milford Youth Center acceptance of a gift uh, attaches a gift acceptance form from Milford, uh, for the Milford Youth Center in the amount of $2,500 from Benjamin Moore and Company. Uh, and we must vote to accept this gift. This gift is given again by Benjamin Moore. Um, Scott, Scott Kaplan was the uh, contact person and he wrote to Jennifer, uh, dear direct award, we greatly appreciate what Milford Youth Center provides to the community and are pleased to provide the Milford Youth uh, Center uh, with the, uh, the enclosed community donation of $2,500. We know the crew and kids have a great time at the center in, uh, in 2023. Please thank your team on, your beha on our behalf and keep up the great work, Scott Kaplan. Again, Scott's been very generous you know, uh, to help Gen Benjamin Moore uh, give these uh, donations to various departments. And Jen also is a, a, a great advocate in, in, in getting uh, um, a lot of these uh, uh, gifts from various agencies, and we've got to give her credit for that as well. Uh, a motion to accept the gift? I make a motion that we accept the gift of $2,500 from Benjamin Moore Company, uh, the contact person, the manager being Scott Kaplan. Um, I just want to point out again, as I have in the past, Mr. Chairman, that um, Scott Kaplan in particular, um, when he began managing Benjamin Moore, has mm -hmm. provided this type of donation to all of the major departments in town that serve the public. So police, fire, senior center, youth center, um, they really go out of their way to make sure that uh, they contribute into the community. And I just to express uh, thanks to uh, Scott. Absolutely, very generous, thank you. And I would second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and I make that unanimous, thank you. And Rick will get a letter out thanking them. Yep. Right. Right. Thank you, thank you. Right. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Okay, next on the agenda is a, um, a request from uh, a police officer, Edward uh, Porkinicki. Uh, Porkinicki. Porkinicki. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Porkinicki to dispose of uh, two uh, owned plows uh, through uh, Municipid. 
and he wrote a letter to um, uh, Rick um, just, uh, just a little while ago. I'm, I'm writing on behalf of the Milford Police Department requesting to place up for uh, auction two town-owned plows uh, which are no longer being utilized. These plows were previously utilized by Carlos Benjamin to be used in the performance of his duties during the winter months. Uh, this past uh, year, the town of Milford has purchased two new trucks for Carlos and his assistant. The plows I am requesting to pla uh, place up for auction will not accommodate the new trucks. I have been informed that the new plows have since been purchased and replaced, uh, they, they replaced these uh, plows here. If approved, I would like to place uh, Below were described uh, on uh, an auction utilizing Municipid. Municipid uh, was used last year in order to auction off surplus inventory and was successful in doing so. Um, there are two plows, one eight feet six inches, a Fisher plow and a Boss plow seven feet six inches. One 2013, the other one 2016. Anybody have any questions regarding this? No, just to point out that we're, we're speaking about the plow unit itself, mm -hmm. not the truck. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So there's no vehicle. Exactly. This is right. just the plow that someone can install onto their vehicle. Um, as you indicated, one of them is 10 years old, the other is uh, seven years old, and these were used on vehicles that uh, the present vehicles won't accommodate these plows. Uh, That's right. Um, because of the electronics. So. Um, if someone has a uh, pickup truck that goes back to those years, likely be a great deal. Michael? I would second that, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I make that unanimous. Next on the agenda is a uh, special town meeting timeline at the request uh, uh, to set the special town meeting date on Monday, October 30th, 2023. Anybody have a chance to review the uh, schedule itself? Yes. Thank you. Good. Anybody have a question with the uh, town meeting date of being October uh, 30th, 2023? Not at all. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion that we approve the schedule as presented by the town administrator for the special town meeting to occur on Monday, October 30th, 2023, which would include uh, each of the items as we work our way up to that particular date. Exactly. Michael? I would second that, Mr. Chairman. I make that unanimous as well. Okay, next is on the agenda is that it attaches a memo from uh, Larry Duncan, a town planner, requesting the board vote to remand a proposed zoning bylaw amendment to rezone multiple parcels located on south and uh, uh, located south on Central Street along in the vicinity of Depot Street and Charles River. Uh, to the planning board for public hearing to be included on the October 30, 2023 annual town meeting. And the letter explains just what I mentioned here and also what uh, John Chabano um, addressed too when, and when he gave his report to us as well. Uh, the change that um, uh, zone. I make a motion that we... Special town meeting. Nice. For special town meeting. Yeah. yeah. My so fault. My fault. That we approve an article for the special town meeting to amend the zoning bylaw zoning map by rezoning multiple parcels from industrial A, central industrial A district to BP business district, business park district. The various parcels of portions thereof are located south of Central Street along and in the vicinity of Depot Street and the Charles River. Michael? I would second that, Mr. And Chairman. And unanimous as well. Um, next on the agenda in under new business is the, um, attaches a memo from uh, Town Planner Larry Duncan requesting the vote board to vote to include an article on the uh, uh, special town meeting of October 30th, 2023 special town meeting warrant to amend Article 6 of the general bylaw of the Town of Milford to rename Industrial Development Commission to the Economic Development Commission. I make a motion that the board approve to present an article change the name of the Industrial District, excuse me, Industrial Development Commission, IDC, the economic development uh, position. Right. Excuse me, commission. Exactly. Michael? I would second that, Mr. Chairman. Second that Chairman. change, too, and I, and I make that change unanimous as well. And that includes for new business. 
Uh, next on our agenda is an invitation to speak. None here, no one at the uh, screen, no one at the uh, in person. Uh, next on the agenda is correspondence. Anybody have any correspondence they'd like to discuss? Um, Mr. Chairman, some time ago, this board approved uh, working with uh, the school superintendent, the school committee, um, the assistant superintendent, um, bringing a program here in Milford, uh, working with Dr. Bob Trembley from the Framingham Schools, mm -hmm. uh, which is English second language for adults, is they found that there were a number of Milford residents that were going to Framingham to sign up for the course and um, just difficult to get in because there's so many people that have an interest. Um, they held the uh, sign up here in Milford. We were funded over a million dollars um, through the state wow. um, in order to bring this program to Milford. And uh, there were 39 seats and the first count, they had about 270 applicants, mm. and wow. the number kept climbing. So mm. for every seat, there were approximately four to five people that have an interest. And rather than be discouraged, um, it, I watched some of the video of what took place as people, because it was a lottery system, mm -hmm. as they were selected and just how happy and joyous they were that a resident of Milford was being given the opportunity. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, knowing that they too will have an opportunity in the near future um, to be able to attend these classes. Mm. You know, opening doors for them, you know, learning the English language is going to open a lot of doors. Sure is. Yeah. And I think it's going to be of great assistance uh, not only to them, but uh, the education of their children, and then, frankly, the community as a whole, as far as Absolutely. Uh, people being able to communicate and assimilate. So Excellent. I just want to bring that to the Well, board. they're very good. Thank you for that, too. It's very encouraging news as well. Uh, any correspondence to you, Michael? Yes, Mr. Chairman, sure. if I may, um, as the three of us know, we did res receive two other correspondence since our last meeting. One was from a resident on uh, the stop sign at um, mm -hmm. yeah. Fruit Street Fruit Extension Street, South and South Main. Yeah. Um, and the other one was some areas in the community uh, that were the concerns that uh, needed some improvements. And I'd like to compliment Selectman O'Laughlin uh, on getting back to those residents uh, right away. Uh, particularly the first one that came in was some concerns with some wires from a pole, some scraps <clears> on <throat> some sidewalks, and some improvements that needed to be done on, I believe, uh, some of the crosswalks. Uh, Selectman O'Laughlin was not even in the country, uh, and I won't go where he was, but he wasn't <laughs> in the country. He was on vacation, yet he took the time to respond to this residents' concerns, and today I got another follow-up email where he had reached out to the uh, state of Massachusetts Department of Public Works because the areas that need the repairs done come under the jurisdiction of the state and not the town of Milford. Um, and the same with the resident on Fruit Street Extension, with the people that are uh, running the stop signs and the Amazon traffic that's going down South Main Street. And the reason that I bring this up is I want to say thank you first to Selectman O'Laughlin for taking the time to get right on that, um, although the two of us did respond to him. Um, but also, um, I, I want the residents of the community to know that, A, if you do reach out to us, you know, and bring concerns to us um, that you see, um, we will definitely get right on it and address it. Um, and again, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I was really quite taken back that Selectman Olafa would be on vacation, but yet he would take the time um, to answer this resident before I did sitting here in the town of Milford. Mm. And I just wanted to say thank you. And again, I just want to repeat to the residents of this community, please, if you see something, take the time to reach out to us because we will 
be proactive and we will respond to you. Right. Thank you, thank you, Michael, for that. And Don, Tom, thank you too for your references as well. well. I found a good Wi-Fi connection at that point on the, uh, <laughs> well, that, that was good. on the cruise ship uh, <laughs> over there in Europe. Uh, so I was able to get back to people. Um, and I think I was more excited about the ability to get back to, get back to people, yeah. <laughs> they were from hearing from me. <laughs> That's what happens. Anyway, thank you both. Um, I have no correspondence, uh, except when Michael would just brought it up. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we will not go, have no executive session. Uh, therefore, uh, if there's no other comments or concerns or questions or anything anybody want to say, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. And I, uh, Michael? I would second that, And Mr. I make Chairman. that unanimous, and I wish everybody who tuned in a happy and safe uh, Labor Day coming up uh, yeah. pretty soon, too. Uh, thank you.